All right, so why don't, why don't I go ahead and get started? We've got, we got seven people in the audience plus the nine of us. I don't want to keep everybody um, just, just sitting here. So first of all, thank you for everybody for, for, for coming out. I know it's a little weird, um, you know, doing this uh, via Zoom instead of face-to-face. -face. You know, we, we, did ha we had planned to have a, um, uh, two town halls back about a month ago, and obviously those were canceled because of, because of COVID. But, uh, um, just to, you know, but it is what it is. And, and, and speaking of, of COVID, you know, I hope everybody is doing well and their families are safe and everybody's practicing social distancing and so forth. And, um, you know, uh, and condolences out to, uh, you know, Lather Village did lose five people um, so far, and we have about 50 cases. So condolences to anyone who's lost a friend or a loved one. But it has been great because as as per usual, our, our community kind of rises to the occasion, and we've got lots of groups who are doing great things, like doing elderly grocery shopping and uh, Sunday night meal deliveries, uh, mask sewing, food donations, and so forth. But um, you know, it is it is a unique time, and, and we're moving the best fo moving forward the best we can with it with the, with the technology. Um, so speaking of COVID, um, you know, everybody knows that this is affecting the economy and we, we don't know what the future is in store. You know, we could be any, up for anything from, you know, a mild recession that's, that's, you know, recovered by the summer to, you know, a full depression that goes on for years or, or anywhere in between. Um, but the issue is, is that we need to make a decision as to whether or not we put something on the ballot and what it looks like by, by mid-August. So. Uh, the good news is, you know, in, in four months we should have a much better sense of what the economy is doing. But, you know, one one alternative of this committee might be, you know, that we end up recommending, do, you know, if we're in a depression, you know, we may, you know, recommend not doing anything this year and looking at it again next year. So that is a, a very real possibility. But the the worst thing that we could do is is just do nothing and then, as it turns out, we get back to November and everything is back to normal or close to normal and we didn't do anything. Uh, and hadn't put any thought into this, and then we, we end up losing another year um, with our, our road and ditch situation. So we, we, we definitely understand the effect, um, but the goal tonight is, is to, to spend about a half an hour introducing four plans, basically three road plans and a, and a plan for our ditches, and then um, open it up for discussion uh, so we can get resident input um, on the merits and weaknesses of the plan. So we're really, we really want to concentrate on, on what's good, what's bad, what people like, what, what they don't like. Um, and we want to do that as if things were normal. Again, we do realize COVID is going to have a big effect on what we do or don't do, but, you know, kind of put your December hat on when, before we knew of coronavirus and look at the plans for what they are, and um, uh, we, we can then uh, rate them or talk about their strengths and weaknesses. So real quickly, I want to introduce the team, um, the, the infrastructure team who's, who's worked together to put these, these, these plans together. You've got Joe Robinson, uh, Hugo Cardenas, Mike Keenan, Mike Griffin, and they're, they're all on the call. Mike is, is our newest uh, member to the team, and we welcome him. Uh, and then our advisors, uh, Scott Ringler, uh, Cheryl Mitchell, uh, Scott Baker, our, our attorney. Scott Ringler is our engineer. Um, and then Salim Siddiqui is also an advisor. I don't think he's on the call. At least I didn't see it, him seem a little bit earlier. So we've been working since, since November on this, since the last election. And one good thing about a controversial election is it puts a spotlight on the issue. And so um, our meetings have been very well attended, which wasn't the case prior. Um, so that's been really great. We've had a lot of people uh, who have come to the meetings, they've made great suggestions, they've had some really great ideas um, that have been implemented into or have been put into these three potential plans for with the ditches um, that, that we're, we're going to talk about. Um, the other thing I want to mention real quickly is that we have not forgotten the feedback from, from the, the prior election. You know, there were a lot of things said about the election, some of them were true, some of them were false. Um, but I did on several occasions, you know, uh, run through the list of things that we heard. Um, with the, with the team because I think it's really important that we keep those things in mind as we try to develop new plans and listen to what the residents say. So people were saying things like, you know, the cost is too high, it wasn't fair to new residents, um, there wasn't enough time for input, uh, process was rushed, it was too extreme, uh, not all roads needed to be touched, um, 19 years was too long, the estate section in, um, in, uh, in Lathrop didn't want their, their roads to be paved, they wanted them to remain dirt. And, and many other things, but we did um, mention those, and, and I did ask the team to kind of keep those in mind uh, as, as we deliberated uh, forward. So 
So let's let's start to get into the the three very different approaches that we 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 developed. Um, as I said a few minutes ago, I'm going to go through all the plans before opening it up for for public comment. And when we do so, um, I'll provide instructions on how how people can comment and ask questions. But right now, everybody everybody is on mute um, until we get to that to that point. Um, the one frustration that I think we had as a committee. Um, you know, we were trying to listen to what people said, and one of the big things people wanted was it was a shorter payback period. And you know, as you remember, the November proposal was a $20 million project over 20 years. And so, if we made it less um, intensive, and you know, let's say we we dropped it down to a $10 million project, but then we also dropped the payback period from 20 years to 10 years, it's still eight mils because as you drop the payback period, the, the millage rate rises. So that was one of the things that we were really trying to work around. Uh, it was a little frustrating, but I do think we came up with um, um, some good solutions to, to, to get around that, that, that frustration. And then the other thing I just want to mention is these numbers are all approximate. Um, we haven't honed down um, exact numbers, and we wouldn't do that until we pick a particular plan. But I think the, the estimates that we put together are, are, are pretty darn close to um, what we would what we would end up with if we chose one of one of these plans. Um, so last November, one of the one of the questions that came up at just about every town hall um, is why we didn't just do a simple millage. You know, why didn't we just assess, you know, four mills or five mills out of our our, our general fund, which would get us a big pot of money um, that we could use every year for say ten years or how, whatever the time period we chose. Um, which is get us a pot of money that we could use annually to, as part of our road improvement program, to just fix fix the roads. And that's something that we would have loved to have done. But the problem is that the state law, there's a, there's a uh, uh, several laws and and, and um, calculations that determine what's the maximum uh, general operating millage that a city can 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 levy. And ours is 20, and that's what we're at. Our chartered rate is 20. So we couldn't add. To our general operating millage, and that's that's why we we defined a specific infrastructure project and proposed to uh, pay for it with a debt service millage because that that kind of millage doesn't count towards your general operating cap, um, and obviously that didn't work out the way that we had configured it. Although we we do have one of the three plans as a reconfiguration uh, using that same concept, which we'll talk about. There's also a second way around uh, that, that cap, and that's to leverage a public safety millage, which, which we'll talk about uh, a, a, little, a little bit later. Um, so just keep in mind as we go through the plans that, that the first what I'm going to do is talk about the three specific uh, road projects, and then when I'm done with that, we'll move over to the, to the, to the, 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 the dishing project, which is you know, in, interrelated. So, so let's, let's get into the, let's get into the project into the potential plans. Um, why isn't my mouse moving? There we go. Okay, so so the first plan. So let's talk about that. So this this first plan is, is, is a plan that we designed. Um, oh, and let me let me mention as well, just from having been on a lot of Zoom meetings, um, the the presentation that I'm going through, if it looks small on your screen, if you're on a, a, a tablet or an iPhone, you can you can pinch and squeeze to make it bigger or smaller. And if you're working on a computer up at the top, there is a, I believe there's a green um, uh, button that you can, you can press that will allow you to change how, how big or small you're, you're, you're viewing the, the presentation. So you can make it bigger or smaller on your own end. Um, all right, so this, this first plan, basically the idea was very similar to what, what I just talked about, you know, the questions that people were asking me uh, last November about just getting a pot of money that we can use every year continually to so that the city can fix the roads as part of their annual road process. So this, this plan here was really designed to try to get us about $850,000. Um, and what we, what, we, what we did and what we're proposing in this plan is to, to get that money from a variety of different sources to limit the hit in terms of, uh, of taxes on, on, on residents. Um, and so, so what, what we would do is start off the, the, the plan, and this, I'm also going to mention here, this is the most complicated plan of the three. This one takes a, a bit of, it's a solid plan, but it does require some, some explanation relative to the other two that we're going to look at. So, um, so basically, again, the idea is to get about $850,000 that the city can use uh, each year to, to address the roads. And so the way that we would get that money is, first off, 
starting by taking some money from our general operating fund. So we would take one, we're proposing that we would ask City Council to dedicate $1.2 million every year for, I'm sorry, 1.2 mills um, every year for 10 years uh, towards the roads. And that's not a stretch. That's, that's something we've been doing for the last, you know, however many years. So for example, for the last seven years, the city has dedicated anywhere from 1.1 to 1.7 mills um, towards the roads. And the average over that time period has been 1.4 mills. So asking for 1.2 mills um, to be dedicated towards the roads each year is, is not a big stretch. So that would be our, our starting base is getting 1.2 mills from, from the general operating fund. The second area would be asking the voters to approve a Headley override to get 1.8 mills additionally that we can add to that 1.2 mills that we talked about a second ago. So as a reminder, because I know everybody who's listening doesn't live and breathe uh, state laws every day like, like, like we do, um, Headley was a state law that basically says that any year where the property value on, on an aggregate level increases in the city, the city must lower its, its millage rate so that we get no more tax money than we got in the prior year. Okay, and so for, for residents who have been here a while, and that, you know, if you think about back in 2003, we voted in a chartered millage rate of 20 mills. And from 2003 to 2010, property values generally went up pretty dramatically. And so what happened is as our property values went up, our millage rate went down all the way down to 16 mills uh, because of Headley. So we lost 25% of our tax base um, because Headley was depressing our millage rate as we were growing in value, okay? So in 2010, what we did is we, we voted in a Headley override, and it actually was approved, I, I think, by a three-to-one margin, if I remember correctly. Um, and what that did is it basically was the residents telling the city that, hey, this one time, we're going to allow you to take the millage rate from 16 and put it back up to 20. And so we did that. And in 2010 through 2014, we were in a recession, so property values didn't rise. But since 2014, property values have been rising, so our millage rate has been falling again. So now our millage rate is all the way down to 18.1 mils, almost 18.2 actually. So what we would do is we would put on the ballot as part of this plan a Headley override, and if voters were to approve it, then we would put the millage rate back to 20, we're currently at 18.1, so what that means is we would get another 1.8 mills, and we would ask council to dedicate that millage, that one, that extra 1.8 mills, towards the roads. Okay, and additionally, we would also, in the ballot language for that Headley override, we would ask that the Headley override be uh, continuous for 10 years, meaning that our chartered millage rate of 20 would stay at 20 for 10 years, so that we would consistently get this 1.8 mills. Okay. I also showed on here um, the last time we did in 2010 when we did the Headley override, we actually did it to the general operating millage and the refuse millage. So that's for leaves, trash, and recycling pickup. So that, that uh, millage is chartered at three mills. It's actually dropped over the last several years because of Headley to 2.7. So that would raise another 0.3 mills. We, we can talk, I mean, the city, the, the city council and the committee will talk about whether or not, you know, it makes sense to add this in or not, but if we did, that'd be another 0.3 mils, so we would raise another, a total of 2.09 mils. We would take 1.8 of that for the city, uh, for, the, for the road program, and then the city could use that other 0.3 mils for, for other, other projects. So that that's, helps us grow that 1.2 mils by another 1.8, so now we're at 3 mils that we could put towards the roads. Um, the last piece would be doing a public safety millage, which is something that I, I mentioned a minute ago. So we talked about the fact that there, there's a 20 mil, mil cap in, in the general operating millage, and we can't go above that. Well, another way of raising funds to get around that cap is to do what's called a public safety millage. And basically what that means is we would be doing a millage for the police department. Okay, and so we would raise... 2.7 million or 2.7 mills. We'd ask that you know again, this would be put to put to the voters, and if it were approved, we'd now have 2.7 mills of new tax that would be dedicated towards the police department. And so what then happens is that the, the general fund of the city no longer has to put that 2.7 mills towards the police department, freeing it up to use in other areas. And we would ask again, city council, to dedicate that for 10 years. Um, toward, towards the road. So it's a bit of a shell game. 
um, and a little bit confusing, but um, it, it is something that's legal. And actually, I, I just read an article a couple days ago that there are over 100 communities in Michigan that are doing some sort of public safety millage uh, to raise money in their general fund for other purposes coming up in this August election. So this is something that, that's starting to become very common uh, across the state to raise money for, for other programs. So essentially, again, it's, it's a little bit of a shell game. Um, but it does, it would free up 2.7 mils. So when you add all that together, that gets us to 5.7 mils, which at our uh, current taxable value equates to $850,000. So that would be a big chunk of money that we could get every year. And then the city would then do a paving project every year. Right now we're spending about $200,000, $250,000 a year uh, on the road. So this would three to, uh, increase that three to four times. Um, so we could begin to do a lot, fix a lot of road over the, over the next 10 years. So obviously the so, question, you know, for residents is, is going to be, well, what, what exactly is this going to cost me? And so in terms of uh, additional taxes that, that you would see in your pocketbook relative to what you're paying this year, there would be another 2.7 mills if, if the voters approved the public safety mill, millage. So you'd be assessed another 2.7 mills on your property value um, along with, uh, another two mils um, for the Headley override piece. Um, although the one thing I do want to mention about the, the Headley override, this really isn't an additional tax. Now, you're, you're actually not paying those 2.09 mils right now, but it's not really a, a new tax. What it really is is, is so much as, as, a, as eliminating a tax break. So Headley has rolled back our, our, our millage rates by two mils. Um, so we're really just eliminating a tax break, not putting a, a new, ta new tax out there. Because um, we really should be paying 20 mils. And in fact, as recently as 2017, um, we were paying 20 mils. But again, Headley ha has rolled that back. So the net effect, uh, though, you know, relative to what you're paying this year would be 4.7 mils, almost 4.8 mils. And to the average homeowner in Lathrop, so to a homeowner, the average household, as we talked about in the last election, uh, has a taxable value of $67,000, that would equate to $320 a year. Now, obviously, if your taxable value is more, you're go you would pay more, but this gives you the ability to um, extrapolate and get a sense of what you, you personally would, would, would be paying. And, and again, you know, if we pick one of these proposals to move forward on, just like during November, we'll give you a variety of tools that you can use to figure out exactly how much it will, will cost you in your specific situation. So that's the, the, the additional uh, cost to you. The other issue with this plan um, is that, you know, five years, if we vote this in and we do this, five years from now, we will have a completely different council. And that council, you know, could potentially um, look, at, look at these mills and say, oh, you know what, we want to build a new police department. I'm going to take these 2.7 mills and use it for something else. Or we want to build a dog park. We're going to take these 1.8 mills and use it for something else. Legally, they could do that. So one of the things that we talked about to, to mitigate that from, from happening was asking council, um, if we go ahead with this plan, to pass a resolution to dedicate the 5.7 mils to road improvements for the next 10 years. And what that would do is if we did have a council that wanted to, to raise, raise those funds, one of the great things about Lathrop is we have a very involved electorate. And if they tried to do something like that, we would have, you know, 100, 100 people showing up for the, for the council meeting with the resolution in their hand saying, look, council promised this. And it would essentially make it, you know, make it political suicide for anybody, for any council person to try to, um, you know, to do that, given, given the promise that was documented uh, to the residents. So um, that's one thing that we came up with to, to, to mitigate, mitigate that risk, okay? So let's, let's talk about the pros and the cons of, 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 of this, this particular plan. So in terms of the plan pros, it's a much less aggressive approach um, than, than November, which is what residents asked for. Uh, it's got a much smaller millage rate. Again, remember the millage rate of the other uh, plan in November was 8.3 mils over 20 years. Um, it's less repaving. You know, again, people said they wanted less, you know, not every road had to be done and it's a much shorter payback period. It's 10 years versus 20. And this allows maximum flexibility um, because the city is just gonna get a chunk of money every year to use for the roads and they can use it on whichever roads makes the most sense at that particular time. So for example, if we have a, a chunk of road, if you remember we talked last year about 
three categories of roads, resurfacing, which is very inexpensive on a relative scale, rehabilitation, which is moderately expensive, and reconstruction, which is very expensive. So if we have roads that are in the, the uh, rehabilitate category that are getting near the reconstruction category, which is about $600,000 more per mile, you know, we have the flexibility to say, okay, this year let's do that rehab road um, and save some money so it doesn't go bad and we end up spending a lot more money. So it provides a lot more flexibility. Um, it does allow us to continually coordinate for 10 years with other projects. So if we have a water main, you know, if uh, Cambridge needs its, its water main replaced, um, we can coordinate that with a, with, a, with a street repavement if it also needs its street repaved so we're not uh, raising costs to do both of those projects. Uh, another advantage of this, this proposal is that um, all $850,000 that we raise would go directly to road improvements because what, the, what we could do is, is I, and I've talked about this before, is the state does give us a small amount of money that we can use towards local roads. And we have about $120,000 a year of other non-road improvement local road expenses like pothole repair, salting, road signs, snow removal, and, and so forth. So we could use our local Act 51 money to pay for those things, which would leave the 850, all $850,000 to go towards um, improving the roads. The other, and this is, a, this is a major benefit of this particular plan, is that it... Um, Allows, you know, every year what we do to be able to pave 0.4 miles of, of road a year is we, we transfer some of the, the money that the state gives us for major roads over to local roads so that we have enough to do that 0.4 miles of road. But this would allow us, this plan, we wouldn't need to do that transfer. And the benefit of that is we would be able to bank our uh, major road money. And one of the things that we have coming down the pike in, in, in a few summers from now is a $1.3 million job to repave 11 mile road. And so this would help us to also raise money for that because we wouldn't have to be transferring money uh, to do local roads every year. Um, we get to do a significant road project each year. Um, this project will pave around 10 miles, maybe a little bit more depending on which, which roads we do. Um, and then yeah, I talked about, I put this here as a pro, you know, the, the Headley portion is really just a tax, um, um, the elimination of a tax break versus a new tax, so that's kind of a pro. And then the other thing that we would do, as with all of these plans, is instead of doing all the dirt roads, which we, we talked about in the last plan, if you remember, there were a lot of people who, I don't know why we call it the estate section, I think it's because it's the bigger homes in Lathrop, um, they wanted their roads to stay dirt as well as some of the other roads that were in more on the interior of, of, of the city. Um, so what we were saying is that the only, only dirt roads that we'll do are those that are major thoroughfares into the, into the city, um, which is a very small portion of road, about 0.4 miles of, uh, uh, in total between Meadowbrook and El Dorado. Um, the plan cons, um, this plan requires, definitely requires some explanation to understand. I mean, there's a little bit of a shell game going on. We have to explain Headley. Um, and so it could confuse some voters. You know, you, we, you know, a lot of people these days are conspiracy theorists. They'll think we're doing something, you know, below the shady or whatever. So it would require a lot of explanation, although it is, is a sound plan. Um, the other issue that we could have is we could have a situation where public safety millage passes and Headley doesn't or vice versa. Now, that wouldn't kill this plan. Basically, what it would do is it meet, would mean instead of getting about $850,000 a year, we would end up maybe with something more like around $600,000. So we'd do less road, but that would be a risk of this particular plan. And then technically, as I said, a future council could try to re redirect funds, but we, we have done things um, we would via the resolution that would hopefully mitigate that possibility. Okay, so... So that's the, that's the first plan, getting a big chunk of money that the city can use every year for 10 years uh, would cost uh, the city about, what did I say, 5.7, 4.8 mils um, over, over 10 years. Okay, so that's plan one. Plan two is very similar to what we did in concept in last November. It's basically defining a specific project, which wouldn't, co wouldn't count against that uh, 20 mil general operating cap that we talked about. So defining a specific project um, over 10 years instead of 20 years. And instead of doing all the roads like we tried to do in November, we're gonna focus only on the worst roads, roads in the city. So it's basically 
same concept, but just doing a, a much less intensive project over a shorter period of time. So in this particular project, um, the roads that would be done are, are, are listed here, and, and I'm listing them by category, not by specific road. We would have to figure out later which specific roads, which specific streets we would do. But um, the idea here is that we've got close to seven miles right now of asphalt road um, that requires rehabilitation. So again, that's the moderately priced category of, of road repair. And so what we're proposing is that let's take a dent out of that. Let's do four miles of that. Um, so we'll basically address about two-thirds of our roads that need, need rehabbing. And that would cost us about $1.8 million. In addition to that, we have four miles of road, asphalt road, that need full reconstruction. That's the more expensive route where we have to dig the road out and totally replace it. So let's do 75% of that, uh, do three miles of that. So that would, that would add another additional $3 million onto the, onto the cost of this particular project. Again, those same two major thoroughfares of Gravel Road, it's pretty minor on a relative scale, would be about 395000 And then that would give us a total project, a defined project, where we did seven and a half miles of road that cost $5.1 million. Okay, and what that would equate to for the average homeowner is three, I'm sorry, what that would equate to for all homeowners is 3.75 mils. And to the average homeowner, again, with a taxable value of $67,000, that would be another. That would be $251 per year for 10 years. So, um, again, a lot less extreme than than the 8.3 mil proposal that we had uh, last last November. And then a few notes about this particular plan: um, we would do this in a two-year project, but it would be paid for over 10 years. So it would take us about two years to do seven and a half miles of of road within the city. Um, as I said, it fixes seven and a half miles, so that's 28% of our road. Um, and after two years, we would just return back to the, the redoing the normal 0.4 miles of repaving every year. So some of that road that we didn't touch, um, you know, we would still have a couple miles of rehab road, a mile of, of uh, asphalt road. You know, we could, we could address some of that with the normal um, 0.4 miles that we do uh, every, every summer. Um, the mix of roads above could definitely be tweaked. You know, again, that's something we're looking for, for input for from, from, uh, from these town halls, city council. Um, we just picked those roads because we figured we wanted to focus on some of the, some of the um, uh, worst roads in the city. Um, and uh, uh, again, that's, that's something that, that, that could be tweaked. We could also make the project a little more expensive, a little less expensive by doing a little more, a little less, less road. Um, so that's all open for discussion. Um, and then the other thing, you know, with respect to the dirt roads is we would also recommend to, to council that they could consider uh, putting some sort of special assessment on, on those 0.4 miles of dirt roads so that the uh, residents of those roads contribute, maybe not pay for the whole thing, but at least contribute, which would free up some money to be used on some of these other roads. So let's talk, so that one was a lot more straightforward than the, uh, than the first plan. Um, so let's talk about the pros and cons of, of, of this particular plan. So in terms of the pros, it's much easier to, to explain and sell to the public because there is no Hadley uh, override and there is no public service millage as opposed to it's just a straightforward debt service millage that pretty much everybody is familiar with, especially since we tried to do it uh, last November. Um, it's a defined project, uh, so the millage, the millage increase doesn't count against our cap, so it's legal. Um, it's significantly lower cost and significantly less extreme than the November proposal. Um, all the work is, up, is done up front in two years. Again, like the prior plan, um, you know, we can save our, our, we don't have to do, for those, for those two years uh, during the project, we don't have to do the transfer of funds from major roads to local roads. So again, that would give us the ability to save some money for the 11 mile project, which is coming up in, in, in a few summers. Um, and then if this is successful and, and well received by the residents, we could always do it again. In 10 years, we could do it again to do the remainder of the roads or even before that. If people thought, well, this was successful, let's, let's do this again for the rest of the roads and it's five years into it, we could, we could do it again. So it's definitely a, a plan that could be um, recycled again for, for another set of roads. Um, the negatives on this is only 28% of our roads get addressed. Uh, albeit some of them are the worst roads, but we don't, we don't get, you know, 72% of our roads uh, addressed. Um, it doesn't provide flexibility. So, you know, this is a two-year project. So if we, let's say we f complete the project and all of a sudden we find out that Wilshire needs a, uh, 
um, you know, a new water main and we paved Wiltshire as part of that two year project, we're going to have to break up a portion of Wiltshire, you know, brand new road um, to put the water main in. So it, it doesn't, doesn't provide a lot of flexibility like the, you know, the ongoing 10 year project did. Um, this project does not address any of the concrete roads. So when we configured the, the, the road makeup of this project, dealing with concrete roads is a lot more expensive. So to keep the cost down, we just focus on asphalt roads. Again, that's something we could change and we can talk about, um, but um, I just wanted to point that out so people, because I think in just on, on a quick review, I don't think people would, would have noticed that, that it doesn't include the concrete roads. Um, and then, as I said, a portion of the full construction, roads needing full reconstruction and, full, or, and rehab aren't done. Remember, we only did about 75% of the roads in that category. So those are the, those are the, the pros and cons of, of, of that second second uh, proposal. The third proposal is also pretty straightforward. And this, was, this one was actually a very late addition in, to, to, the, to the process. Uh, it, it came up from audience suggestions in the last 15 minutes of our last meeting. Um, and basically, a few people said, well, you know, the last proposal may have had some merit if it wasn't you know, so expensive. In other words, you know, we, we might, be, might be willing to, to do a 20-year project um, if it didn't cost so much. So we kind of went to the drawing board and kind of looked at it. Could we come up with a long-term proposal um, that would, would meet, those, meet those demands? And so this particular proposal, um, which it's a good proposal, it, 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 what, it, what it does is it, it repaves all the roads in the city with the exception of the roughly 10 miles of road that are currently in good condition. So those are the ones that were in the resurface category when we talked about this last November. So we would pave all roads in the city with the exception of those 10 roads, and we also wouldn't pave about two-thirds of the dirt roads. So most of the bad road in the city gets addressed. And so you can see in the table that I included here, um, we've got some asphalt roads here that require full reconstruction. So about, looks like about, uh, about, five, four, uh, about five miles of road, so we would do all those. Um, in terms of the current gravel roads, very small portion of the gravel roads that we would do, just a, a quarter of a mile and, and two-tenths of a mile. Um, we have six miles that, of asphalt road that need to be reconstructed. I'm sorry, rehabilitated. We would do all those. In terms of resurfacing, zero. We wouldn't do any resurfacing, so those 10 miles would not be included in this project. And then all the concrete roads would be, you know, the, that require it would either be uh, reconstructed, heavily patched, or lightly patched. So this, this does hit a major amount of roads. Uh, it hits 16 miles of roads, all, all the bad ones. Um, it would cost about $10.5 million. And then this project um, would cost about 3.7 mil. So the cost of this project is really the same as the, the second project that we talked about. Um, the only difference being it would be a 20-year project instead, I'm sorry, it would be a 20-year payback um, instead of a 10-year payback. And so what this would mean is for 20 years, um, the, the average homeowner in Lather Village with a taxable value of $67,000 would pay $248 per year, okay? And, but that would be for 20 years. Um, this project would take three to four years to do. Um, only, as I said, uh, only about 0.4 miles of the dirt roads would be done. And again, just the major thoroughfares that are, that are currently dirt. Um, after the three to four year project, uh, the city returns to addressing the, the 0.4 miles of road a year. So some of those, those roads that aren't touched, the 10 miles of, of road that are currently in good shape, as some of those fall into poor shape or, or worse shape and need some, some, some TLC, um, the annual um, summer road program could address some of that. So let's look at the pros and cons for this plan. Um, so the, 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 the plan pros um, is that all current bad road is addressed. So when we're done with this project, uh, after four years, the city's roads should be, in total, should be in, a, in pretty darn good shape, um, you know, which is something that we all want. Um, easier to explain, again, because it doesn't require a heavily override or a public service millage. Um, about 60% of all the city roads are addressed. Um, it does provide some flexibility because it's a four-year project, so we would be able to be pretty flexible in terms of what we do when over four years. Um, it is a defined project, um, so it doesn't count towards the 3.7 mils, wouldn't count towards our, our, tw our 20 mil cap. Um, again, it's significantly lower cost, 
than the November proposal. You remember the November proposal was 8.3 mils. Um, this is 3.7 uh, and less extreme. Uh, all work is done in three to four years. And again, the, the, the same two points that were in, in the other plans, uh, we can bank our major uh, road funds for four years because we wouldn't have to do a transfer. So that puts us in good position for the 11 mile road project in three or four years. And again, um, we can use our local road money to from the state to do the non, you know, the snow removal, salt, all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, the negatives of this particular plan is that it's a 20 year payback period. Um, so it is a long payback period, albeit less than significantly less than, than the November proposal. And then the other negative that I was able to think or that we were able to think of is that um, roads that are in decent shape now uh, are not addressed. I'm sorry. Road Yeah, okay, I misread that. Yeah, so road, roads, roads that are in decent shape now are not addressed, and, and some could go bad during the 20-year um, payback period. Um, but, again, some of that could be mitigated by the ongoing uh, maintenance project that we do every summer. So those are the three plans. So um, three very different plans. Plan one was, was getting about $850,000 a year from multiple sources, from the general fund, from a Headley override, and from a public safety millage. Plan two was doing about seven miles of, of the worst roads in the city uh, over 10 years, so a less extreme project than last November, and that would be about 3.7 mils. And then this last plan addresses all the bad road uh, in the city, about, 50, what did I say, 16 miles, uh, 3.7 mils, but it's over 20 years instead of 10, 10 years. So significantly less from a millage perspective than in November, uh, but over, over 20 years. So, so that's the road piece. Um, so I know there's going to be a lot of questions on that when we open it up. Um, if I haven't bored everybody and they're still still on the call. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about, spend about five minutes talking about, um, is how the, the ditches factor into, into these three plans. So the idea is, is that we would, we would uh, as a city, we would propose, you know, one of these three proposals and hopefully it would pass and so we would have road money and then we would also need to deal with the with the ditches because the roads and the ditches are pretty intertwined, which which we talked about a lot last November. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about the ditches first, just for as a refresher, providing a little bit of background. Um, the issue is 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 that without doing ditch repair, um, it's going to diminish the life of the road. Our, our, our engineer estimates about you get about 10% less less uh, life out of the roads. Um, if you if you don't repair the ditches, um, if we you know if we don't repair our bad ditches, so what that means is we're wasting 10% of our money. So if we do a 10 million dollar project, um, essentially what we're doing by not fixing the ditch, if we don't fix the ditches, is taking a million dollars of, of taxpayer money and kind of flushing it down the drain. So um, council, as as um, you know, the city's fiduciaries, uh, our city fiduciary. Um, really talked about last November, uh, and this may have changed, I haven't talked with them uh, about this particular point uh, since, since November, but there wasn't a lot of appetite for approving a road plan if it didn't have ditch improvements because of the fact that we are the, 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 the watchdogs for city money and we didn't want to waste 10% of the money. Um, so You're not wasting 10% of the money, Bruce, if you're repaving a road that doesn't need ditch improvement, right? True. If, if if you have a road that doesn't need ditch improvement, but if it does need ditch improvement, then on that particular road, we're not being good stewards of city money because we're not going to get the expected life out of the road. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Good point. Good point. Um. So, I'm gonna get my uh, my my notes here. Okay. So, um, and and that's not the only issue with the ditches. You know. Um, you know, we also, you know, the standing water draws insects. We've had a rodent explosion over the last 10 years as the ditches have gotten worse because they have a fresh water supply. Sidewalks and driveway approaches are crumbling. People can't grow grass in certain areas because the water backs up. So it's, it's not just the, you know, the, the road issue, but it is, it is a big issue. So initially after, after the election uh, in some of our first meetings, what we, what we considered was doing a, a citywide ditch program, just uh, irrespective of the roads. Um, let's let's tackle the ditches and and just do a ditch program where we would do a citywide special assessment. We would take all the costs uh, associated with with repairing the ditches and divide it by the 1,600 homes, which again is something that people said that they 
They wanted, uh, in the election, they wanted things to be more even and equitable, and then everybody would pay the same amount and we would fix the ditch system. And we were thinking about that pretty seriously until we started looking at the cost of, of doing that. Um, the problem was, is if we did a standalone ditch proposal, as you remember from our discussions back in November, there, there's a lot of uh, synergy and overlap between a ditch and a road project. So for example, um, when we do a road project, a lot of the driveway approaches have to be broken up, the first few feet of them, and, and repaved. Well, the most expensive part of a ditch program is breaking up the driveway to take a non-functional culvert out and then repaving it. But when we, when we do the projects together, the ditch program doesn't have to pay for that cost because the road repair covers that cost of, of doing all that concrete work. But when we looked at doing it as a standalone project, the, the, the cost just Balloon, balloon dramatically because now we had to pick up the, pat, the all the cost of um, that concrete work. The same was true for landscaping. So it became a much more um, expensive way of, of doing things. And so as we talked about this, we actually had some, some residents in the meeting who came up with a couple of, of, of good suggestions or guidelines, however you want to refer to them. Um, the comments were, were basically that, that separating them would not be smart because we're going to waste a lot of money and that we should only be doing um, ditching simultaneous with, um, with the road projects. Um, whoop, something came up on my screen. Okay, yeah, so we would, we would only, we would only do um, ditching programs simultaneously with road projects so that we could take advantage of the massive amount of savings. And then the other suggestion was um, that we should consider only repairing the ditches on the specific roads that are being repaved. So we thought about that and we kind of, in, in our discussions, and again, our discussions are still all open, which is why we're having this, this town hall, but our, um, we, we, we moved forward with the ditch program that kind of took those two suggestions to heart. And so what our, what our ditch proposal is, 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 is saying is that ditch repairs will be done only on those streets that are repaved. And like the last, uh, last ballot proposal in November, it would include regrading the ditches so that they flow correctly, jet cleaning the, the, the functional culverts, and replacement of the non-functional culverts. Now, the cost of these repairs would be paid for only by the residents of a given city block via special assessment that is paid over 10 years. Um, and the cost of the, the, the repair on any given city street would be split evenly among those residents. So if, for example, um, you know, Sunnybrook was getting repaved um, and, it, and its ditches were then, would then be uh, uh, repaired as well, the residents of Sunnybrook would pay for that, that, um, that repair via a special assessment that they would be allowed to pay back over 10 years. So the idea is, is that only the people that are incurring the costs are are paying for the cost. So I, I remember in one of the town halls, we had a resident who was irate because um, her street was, you know, the ditches worked fine. And in the last proposal in November, she was literally yelling that why should I have to pay for other people's ditches when, you know, our street is working fine. So, so again, that kind of helps to, to get towards that is that only streets that are repaved have their ditches done and the costs of those ditches are split evenly between um, those, those particular residents uh, as, as a special assessment. Now, the thing I want to point out, and this is, this is probably the most important point in the entire um, discussion here, this is an additional cost over a voted in road program. So if we vote in one of those three programs, the particular residents who have their streets done are going to have an additional cost um, for, for their ditches, okay? And we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, Streets with ditches in good conditions are going to have lower costs, and streets uh, with bad conditions will have higher costs. So, for example, on, on my daily walk, there's one street that I noticed that, that their ditches are in great condition except for one driveway culvert that needs to be repaired and a, and a route that blocks the entire one that's right before the storm drain that blocks the entire ditch. So anytime it rains, that whole side of the street backs up. Well, that particular street is going to have very low costs because it's just basically a driveway culvert and fixing a route. Um, whereas other streets, you know, for example, uh, one, one that I see that's in bad shape is Cambridge. Um, so, you know, their, their costs would be higher because their, their street would need a lot of work. So to some extent, you know, while we do have estimates for, for, for what it would cost for, for individual street sections, it is going to depend to some extent on how good or bad the ditches are in that, um, in that, on that street. And I think that's the point that Mike was making a little bit earlier. 
Um, the other thing that, that we, we had said is that, you know, with a special assessment, you know, a street could, you know, it requires a public hearing and those members of that street could come, come and say that we don't want the special assessment for ditches. Um, you know, all they need is 50% of the people, 51% of the people to, to indicate that. Um, and if, if uh, we do have streets that successfully contest their special assessment, um, council would, would more than likely take that street off the list because they would be um, basically not using uh, city funds uh, responsibly by putting funds towards uh, a road that wouldn't get the full life out of, out of or the expected life out of the road. Um, and then just, again, just to reiterate uh, kind of in summary, while all residents would be paying for an approved road program, only those residents whose streets are fixed will receive and pay for ditch repair. And again, the cost would be split evenly over uh, 10 years by the streets residents. So some examples of that, I, I just went through um, and picked a couple streets or one or two streets on, on every quadrant in Lathrop to give some examples. Um, and so you can see here, for example, um, Saratoga, um, you, know, has, you know, from Santa Barbara to uh, Woodward Way. Um, ditching for, for, for that street, you know, based on its length and the number of homes, because remember this is going to be dependent on the condition of, of your particular ditch system on your street, as well as the number of homes. So if, you're, if there are a lot of houses in a small area, it's going to be lower cost than, a home, than where you have bigger lots with fewer homes in, in that same area. So um, on that particular street, we're looking at about $121 per year. Um, whereas you look at a, a street like Cambridge, which has uh, much more densely packed house, I'm sorry, much less densely packed houses, um, it was a little bit more expensive, about $280 per year. So keep in mind um, that, you know, uh, for example, Saratoga residents, you know, if we, if we voted in, say, Proposal 2 or Proposal 3, that's going to give them a 3.77 mills, and to the average homeowner, this is 2 mills. So now that, that street is paying 5.7 mils. So they're going to be paying more than residents who, um, who don't have street work done, uh, but they are getting their ditches repaired in the process. So it's a lot is less than the eight, it, it, it's a lot less, one sec, one sec, Mike. It's okay. a lot less than the 8.3 mils that they were paying under the, the prior proposal, um, but it, it is a little bit more than somebody who would not be having their, street, their, their ditches done or their street done at, at all. So Mike, did you have a comment? Yeah, is that that Saratoga section? Is that a dirt road? Uh, I I don't know. I just I just I just <laughs> use our, our spreadsheet. It might be. Okay, all right. No, I was just kind of. I live on Saratoga, so. Yeah, I think it is if it's yeah. west of. <laughs> so I did, Well, my question was not whether it's a dirt road or not. It, are we for the ditch proposal? Would that still comprehend residents on dirt roads that need ditch repair, even well, though no. they're possibly not getting repaved? Right, so that's that's one of the cons that we're going to talk about in a second. Is okay, that right. people streets that don't get don't get repaved, don't get their ditches done. Okay. So, so that's that's one of the cons. So I, I may have picked a bad street, but in any even if the, the, the no, I know it's an example. I wasn't worried. I mean, that's like I said. It just like I said. I thought that was a dirt road. I was just kind of curious to see if we we're still including ditch repair for dirt roads. That's all. That won't be repaved. That's all. Right. No. So no. so yeah. Could they select to have their road done? Even, I mean, do an assessment if they want. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, that's, I guess they could always do that. Yeah, that, that's that's one thing I was going to talk about, Mike. In fact, we, we do have a couple streets that are actually talking about that. So I'll, I'll hit that in a second. So let's let's quickly finish up here by looking at the pros and the cons of, of this ditch proposal. Um, one of the pros is that the city begins to correct a long-term problem um, that degrades our roads, um, you know, causes insect and rodent problems, growing grass, degrades our sidewalks and our driveway approaches. Um, you know, we all know the issue. Um, the big pro to this is that significant savings are preserved because we're doing it in conjunction with the roads, so we're saving a lot of money um, on some of the more expensive work that, that's done as part of a ditch program. Um, only residents who have ditch work done pay for the ditch program, which is different from the proposal in November. Um, residents only pay for the work on, on, on that their block's ditch system requires because it works, it does work as a system, the whole block works as a system, so that's why, you know, you can't just repair one, one person's ditch, um, you know, it, it has to be fixed as a system. Uh, and then those costs are evenly split by the residents of, of the block. 
and then again, I think a benefit is that the residents don't have to pay for it all at once. They would have to pay for it over over a, a ten year um, ten year process. Um, the cons, I, I, actually, I, I didn't list the obvious con here, which is it's an additional cost to the the, the streets um, that that residents would be paying for. Um, but the, the the big con here uh, is that not all streets get ditch improvements. Only those that are that are repaved get them. Um, so the percentage of streets getting new ditches would depend on which particular road plan was, was voted in. So if we did plan one, which was where we get that $850,000 pot of money from a variety of sources, um, that plan would, would do about 40% of our roads and therefore 40% of our ditches would get repaired. Plan two, which is where we you know, kind of did an approach like last November, but we scaled it way back and said we'll do seven miles of road over 10 years. Um, that only addresses 28% of our roads and therefore 28% of our ditches would be repaired. And then plan three, um, which was the one that repairs all our bad roads uh, over 20 years, um, that ditch work will happen over 20 years, but we will get 60, no, I'm sorry. Well, that plan, we would do the project in the first four years. So uh, in four years, we would do 62% of our uh, sixty-two percent of our ditches. So, so not only do a lot of our roads get repaired with Plan Three, a lot of our ditches um, uh, get get repaired as well. And then, as Michael Griffin was was suggesting, um, you know, be, because there are a lot of streets or a lot of city blocks that aren't going to get uh, ditch repairs uh, associated with this, uh, with any of those, with, with all three of those plans, um, a block could could ask the city uh, to do a special assessment on their street to fix their ditches. Um, and in fact, we have, um, I've, I've heard of two streets that, are, that have, have been talking about it. The residents of the street have been talking about it, one of them very seriously, and they've actually been working with us um, to try to figure out something because they're, in, they're just in horrible shape. We, we walk that street with the dogs every, uh, every weekend, and it, it, after even the work, a little rain, that whole street is a mess. So, um, so they're, they're talking very seriously as, as the residents of the street taking it into their own hands and, and, and covering the costs by having it done via special assessment. So that's the ditches. We've talked about the roads. Uh, again, I'm sure there are plenty of questions and comments uh, to be had. Um, so what we'll, what we'll do next is if you're listening and you want to um, ask questions or make a comment, um, there is a function um, on your particular device that you're watching on to do what they call raise your hand, or alternatively, you could use the chat function to chat with Cheryl Mitchell, uh, who's the city administrator, uh, and let her know that you have a question. And what she will do is she will turn on people's audio uh, to allow them to comment. She'll announce your name. So, for example, she'll say, Marcella, you have the floor for the next three minutes. We'll, we'll uh, give everybody three minutes of, uh, of comments. Uh, the other thing, I, I, don't, I don't know, we may have some people who are dialed in uh, with their phone and not doing the video. You also can raise your hand, uh, even if you're just using the telephone. Uh, the way you do that is you press star or asterisk nine on your phone, and then Cheryl will get a message indicating that you're one of the people that, that wants to raise their hand. So we'll give you um, a, a minute or so to, to send her a chat message or to, to raise your hand, and while, while you guys are doing that, I just want to open it up real quickly to the panelists to see if there's anything that they want to say, so the, the other members of the committee that they want to uh, address anything I misspoke about or comments that you guys want to add, feel free to do so now. Okay, well, if, if none of the panelists have, have yeah. comments. I asked my question, so uh, you know, I'm, I'm done. Thanks, Mike. Um, so Cheryl, go ahead and, and make people live, and uh, and we'll 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 start getting feedback. Okay, we well, have your first question from James McBroom, and Mr. McBroom, you have three minutes. Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me? Yep, can you hear you fine. Yep. Thank you. I just had a couple questions. I live at uh, two six four one five Meadowbrook Way. Uh, in the last six years that I've been living here, anytime we get heavy rain corner of Middle, Middlesex and Meadowbrook Way gets inundated with water and floods pretty bad. So the ditch repair question is my biggest thing I'm concerned with. We have a paved street on Meadowbrook and we have a concrete paved street in Middlesex. So the, the paved repairs would not primarily be coming to us. But 
I do have a rotted uh, feed pipe underneath my driveway. Exactly how would these millage repairs uh, affect my ability to get that uh, drain pipe resurfaced and handled? Okay, well, I'll, I'll address the first part and then I'm gonna turn it over to Scott Ringler uh, for, for the second part. So the, the, the first part um, in terms of the, the, if you have a non-functional culvert, uh, sounds like you do, sounds like yours is rusted out. Um, the, the ditch repair program will, uh, repl will replace on uh, non-functional culvert. So basically what'll happen is they'll break out the first three feet of your driveway approach, pull out the uh, defective culvert, put in a new culvert, and then, you know, repair the, 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 the driveway approach. So that would, um, you know, keep the water flowing through, through your ditch the way it was designed to do. And then Scott may know a little bit more about that intersection or, or what's going on there, and I'll let him address that uh, specifically. Yeah, James, I'm sorry. I really don't know that intersection that well. Uh, I would think the key thing is to make sure that we have all the uh, existing storm sewers cleaned through that area if that's what's causing the backflow. Uh, I don't know exactly what the issue is there. If you have any better information, you can always uh, email it to me and I'd be happy to take a look at it for you. Yeah, and, it, and just to build on what's, what Scott just said, you know, uh, again, part of the, the ditch program is to clean out all of the, uh, the, the, the culverts and, and, you know, get everything working back to 100%. So, um, you know, if we did that, then I would assume, again, I haven't looked at your particular issue, nor has, has Scott, but I would assume then that would alleviate the, uh, the problem. And again, it's, you know, it, it, it's not unique to you. This, this is a problem that is the same problem is all over Lathrop and, and which is why we, we feel it's so important that we have to fix the drains along with the roads when it's when it's cheaper to do that. I think part of James's uh, question is the intersection part of it is a cement road, which in all the proposals for the most part we're not addressing cement roads. So well, in, pro in proposal three, the 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 cement uh, the cement roads would be done as part of proposal oh, okay. three. Right. Um, proposal one um, doesn't preclude cement roads. Um, that's where we get eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year to work on roads, and we can decide as as the city council and and the infrastructure committee can work together to decide what roads are are being done, and that could include concrete roads. The only one that that um, that didn't specifically include concrete roads was 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 plan two, and we okay. did that just to keep the cost down. And again, that's something we could talk about reconfiguring um, if we had to. So James, does that does that address your question? Is there anything to preclude somebody from fixing their own culvert anyway if they have a problem? Uh, no, people people do that all the time. Okay. In, in fact, you know, I I can't tell you how many emails and and questions I've had at at the town halls back in November saying, uh, or even before November as we were talking about it saying. Uh, um, you know, do you think this is going to pass because I was going to redo my culvert, but you know, if, if this is something that the city is, is going to do as part of a program, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. So, um, so yeah, it would, it would definitely, um, do people's culverts if they weren't working. Okay. The next speaker I have is change my screen and I can't see anything anymore. <laughs> Hold on. Is Marcella Rogers. Ms. Rogers, you have three minutes. You're unmuted. Okay, can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine, Marcella. I hope you're doing well. If it gets um, loud in the background, let me know. Um, I mean, certainly this is a lot of info to look over. Um, is this document like available? Can I get a copy of this? Or like, are you gonna post this document? To, Cause like you would be talking and I would wanna like scroll back, but I, <laughs> but I couldn't because it wasn't my document, it was your document. So yep, I, I, I'd be I'd be happy to post it. Okay, um, I guess my next question. Well, I, there's just two questions. So, is there just a general reason why special assessments aren't looked at for the roads? Like, is there a reason why like people on particular street, like you could pull people on particular streets and just do the whole road project as a special assessment if people on that road all buy in. 
Because I feel like that way it would be like you either have like a majority of a buy-in and it's by street. It doesn't have to be like whole project or no project. And then just to follow up with that, like are, are we going to find out which streets for which plans? And I, the way you talked made me think maybe you can't be that specific before we would vote. But I feel like just people looking in terms of finances, I mean, if they're going to have the ditch add on as well, but don't know if their street's going to be included, like how can they really make an educated decision as to whether or not they can like, you know, incur all of those costs. Uh, I can take a, sh a stab at answering that. Um, so the, the, the special assessment, I mean, one, one of the, you know, the, the, you know, I'm just thinking of the, of, of how the special assessment would relate to some of the, some of the plans. Now, now as part of any of these proposals, there are going to be people who are not getting their streets done. So for example, in any of these proposals, my street's not going to get, get going to be one of the ones that, that gets, gets done because it's in pretty decent shape. And there's going to be, you know, there's 10 miles of, of road like that. But those people are still paying the millage um, because they're getting the benefit of, of, of using all the roads. So if you did a special assessment on just your street, you lose all that money and the special assessment for yours to just to repave your street is going to be pretty astronomically expensive is, is, is going to be my guess. Scott, you look like you're about to say something, Ringler. No, it wasn't. Okay. Uh, um, so I, I think that the, the the cost of doing things that way, um, you know, would I mean it, it eliminates the, you know, kind of the 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 paying the millage for the for the benefit of all, um, and so it puts puts the the onus on just that particular street, and I don't think people are going to be able to afford afford that. I think it's going to be way. I don't know for a fact. I'd have to do the numbers or work with Scott to do the numbers, but I'm going to guess that um, the the special assessment for that would be would be quite high. The other thing um, about that as well with, that goes along with with special assessments: um, if you sell your house, you have to pay off the special assessment as with part of, you know before you sell the house. So with with the, with the ditch program, you know if that were to happen, it, it's it's it, you know it could be couple thousand dollars depending on when you sell your house and how bad the ditches are on, on, on a particular street uh, but it's not something that's going to be astronomical but with with a road you know with a 10-year road special assessment I got to imagine that that's got to be a pretty large sum um, can I just follow up real quick yeah I mean for somebody like us it might be really eye-opening for us to see those numbers. I don't know if that'd take you a ton of time, but for you to say, hey, look, on San Quentin, you guys want a special assessment? This is how much it would cost to fix your road. I'm just saying, like, in looking at all the possible options, you know what I mean? Like, that might be good information for people like us to have. Yep, I, I'll, I'll, I'll work on that in the next week or so, uh, Marcella. No rush. <laughs> yep, and then, and then with, with respect to which streets, um, we, we probably, well, so for plan three, we could definitely tell you which streets because basically that plan says we're going to do all streets that don't need, you know, the simple resurfacing. Those would be left out of the, out of the program. So we could definitely tell you, um, you know, which streets in, in, that, in that proposal. In, in plan one, where we just get an $850,000 bucket and, and, you know, decide each year what makes the most sense, um, we're definitely not going to know which streets. And in plan two, where we said, let's just take some of the worst roads, um, you know, we could tell people what roads are in those categories. So if, but, but again, it's, it's, it, it's probably going to be, you know, we would, that would happen over a couple of years. So we probably have a little bit of flexibility and might make some changes based upon various factors, but, you know, we would have a good, uh, I'm going to say a good idea, maybe not an exact idea of which, 75% of the, you know, the roads that need full reconstruction are going to be done. I mean, we could probably make a decent guess. Um, but, and, and those are all things that, we're, that we would do. I mean, if you remember in the uh, November um, proposal, you know, we had uh, maps of the city out there showing which roads would be done using which technique and when they would be done. So all those kinds of things we would, we would do with whatever proposal, um, you know, if any, that we would decide to put on the ballot in November. Yeah. Is that, is that, sorry, last one, is that um, the one that shows like the conditions of the road, is that document still accessible on the website somewhere? 
I think it is. If not, let me know and I can get it for you. Okay. All right. Thanks yeah. so much, Bruce. Yeah, Joe is hold Joe is holding up the documents if you can see her screen. No, I can't. I can only see you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, next we have Phyllis Lindham and your mic is live. You have three minutes. Hi, this is Phyllis. Um, I have a question related to the plan as well. Uh, before in the last plan, I know that I live, I'll tell you where I live, and this may be one of the streets that you were walking your dog past, but I'm right outside the park. I'm on Sunset at the dead end, Sunset Boulevard East. Okay. And it's just swampland when it rains because the water is not, is not uh, going out through the drainage properly. It's backing up and then it backs into my yard as well. So when folks are walking their dog, they try to walk in the grass and their shoes stink. And I see it, I see it all happening. I feel really bad. But my question is, I am on this dead end and I would have to look at those plans again. I'm kind of like Mr. McBroom who, who mentioned, you know, the flooding, but I'd have to look at those plans again and understand by me being on a dead end, what's a block that would maybe cover part of that cost. It would be just me, right? Because I'm on the end and my block, well, not necessarily, I guess it, maybe it runs all the way down the street, but my block ends at California. I'm just right at that curve. And I know you're familiar with where that is. So how, or I, I'm not sure what plan would make sense to try to get I, I think my issue is more the culvert, the, the drainage, than the street, because the street is not that bad. So I probably wouldn't fall in the category of repairs pretty quickly. Do that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, that 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 made sense. I mean, like I like I said, one of the negatives of that approach is that not every ditch system gets done. Um, as far as the um, as far as the uh, um, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh yeah, you know the number of houses on your um, uh, street and splitting the cost. That, again, I, I, we would put together a, a document that would show, you know, like I showed on there, um, you know, the six different uh, examples that I showed of, of different street segments that and how much the estimated ditch cost would be. Um, that factored in in obviously the number of homes that were on each of those streets. We would put something together like that for. All the residents. So again, I mean, if you're if you're deciding on voting for this or against this, um, you know the you know that's something that you would need to know, and we would make sure to have that information available for everybody. But my question is, would that what, how many houses would that include? Because I'm on a dead end on one side. There's some people down on the other end of Sunset. Well, I, I I would have to see the particular the you know we'd have to see the particular block and see you know. I mean, the, the streets are going to get handled as, uh, you know, as, as a block basis, and some might be multiple blocks together, but I, I would have to see uh, what that is. I'd have to see it to be able to give an estimate. Okay. Well, that's what, yeah, that's what I need to know. The next speaker we have is Elaine Martinen. Okay, so if I need to promote her to a panelist to allow her to speak because she has an older version, I will do that. I'm sure she. I'm sure she won't go rogue. <laughs> we we all know Elaine. We know where she lives. You're muted, Elaine. Say hi, really quick. Oh, oh, okay. now we got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, Mama, uh, just a minute. I'm on a meeting. Okay, go tell daddy. Sorry. Mama, I just, I just told you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so my question is, um, if none of these things pass, is there any point where the city is just going to kind of move forward with doing special assessments to get the funding for the projects? Um, and then like, I'd somewhat unrelated, I guess, potentially is what's the status of what's going on with the sidewalks? Okay. Um, so are, when you say, when you say if, if, if this doesn't pass, is there something that would, would be done via special assessment? Are you talking about the ditches or are you talking about the roads? 
Well, both, I guess, because um, I don't know. I mean, I think that right now there's a lot of people who are concerned about their finances, and I just feel a little bit concerned about whether this would pass or not at any point in the near future. And as a, a homeowner who bought the house here in Lathrop, not planning to live here when my family was expanding, we are like kind of in a situation where last year we were looking at houses, like bigger houses in Lathrop. And this is something that um, we don't want to buy another house in the city if we have no end in sight to the road and infrastructure issues. Right. So, so if this, if this doesn't pass, uh, you know, well, first of all, I don't know if you were, were you on at the very beginning when I was doing the introduction? No, I missed a couple of minutes. Sorry. Yeah. So one of, one of the things that we, we talked about was the fact that, you know, with the whole COVID-19, we don't know what the economy is going to do. We're moving forward um, so that if the economy does improve by November and it makes sense to put something on the ballot, we can. I mean, one possible outcome of all of this is that we decide not to put something on the ballot um, because of the, the economic situation. But um, if we do put something on the ballot and, and it fails, then, you know, I, you know, special assessments, you know, we, you know, we just talked about that with, res with respect to Marcella. I don't know if that's a, a valid option because I think that would be, you know, I think people would be, I, mean, I suspect without having done the math that that would give people sticker shock of what it would cost to special assess for, for their roads with just them um, paying for it as opposed to the whole community. Um, but yeah, we would, we would have to, figure out what was next. I mean, if, you know, it would depend on the feedback on from the loss, you know, if we put, if we put one of those proposals on there and it lost, we'd have to try to figure out what, you know, like we're doing, like what we're doing now, you know, we heard what people said and um, uh, heard what people said in November and we're trying to address those concerns and come up with something that, that that's livable. I mean, nobody wants to pay money for this kind of stuff, but it's something that, that has to be done. Um, in terms of special assessments for the ditches, uh, uh, again, that was something that we, we seriously considered of just doing a separate, um, you know, special assessment uh, citywide for, for, for the ditches. But, you know, I think, if, I don't have the numbers in front of me and it's been a while since I looked at it. I think it jumped up from being a little under, under $4 million of the $21 million proposal um, that we had in November to being about six and a half million dollars um, when it was done as a standalone project, you know, where we lost all of the synergies between, you know, for the concrete repair and the landscape repair. Um, so it got expensive really quickly to do it separately. So I, I don't know that we would um, do that again. That's something that we would have to consider based on a loss at the polls. So, you know, if we just, if enough people were yelling, hey, just get it done, might be something we would consider. Um, in terms of the sidewalks, uh, the sidewalk proposal uh, that we put in front of a recommendation that the committee put in front of um, council last year was approved and we're actively working on that. So um, as a reminder, um, we were going to do the business frontage first in year one. Um, and so we're currently budgeting for that. And, and I say budgeting for that because, you know, it'll be done via special assessment, but we have to put out the money up front. Um, so we're, we're budgeting for that. Um, you know, the, I think we have a database of all the, the sidewalk flags that need to be repaired. Um, so that will happen this summer. And then uh, the following four summers, we'll do one quadrant each of, of, of Lathrop. So, um, so that's, that's, that's in progress. Good. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have, is that Kelly? Mr. Kelly, your mic is live. You have three minutes. Thank you. Hi, can everybody hear me? Yep, can you hear me fine, Zach? Hello. Yep. Great, thank you. Hey, um, first, Bruce, thanks for explaining those. I think you did a very good job giving us all the details of your plans. I appreciate that. Um, my first comment and question is, I agree with Marcella that um, I think it would be interesting to see what the individual street special assessment numbers would be. Um, I know you say that they were probably pretty astronomical, which, you know, very well may be the case. But if I remember hearing from some of the other public meetings, isn't that the way that many of the roads in Lathrop were paved in the first place as they went from dirt to um, blacktop with a special assessment on that individual road? Um, yeah, some, 
sounds some like of, some of the roads. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Like I didn't mean to cut you off. No problem. I appreciate it. It sounds like it, it can't be that expensive if that's the way it was done in, in the first place. I understand that was a long time ago, but the prices are probably different for sure. Um, and then my second question is, I know you can't see into the future, but from my perspective, it seems pretty safe to assume that if proposal A wasn't taken or proposal one, that in the next year or two or three, then the city council would be going to the voters to do that heavy rollback anyways to bring the levy amount back up to 20 mils no matter what do you agree with that's probably pretty safe to assume i can tell you we're talking we just started talking about it um you know uh i've had a conversation with with one person from the city about um you know uh you know if we don't if we didn't put something on the on the ballot this year uh for uh, the roads, you know, did we want to put something on there for, for a heavily rollback? So, you know, there, there's definitely starting to have some conversations about that because, you know, we're, we're you know, I think you, you hit the, the, the nail on the head. The, you know, if if property values start to drop over the next 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 couple of years, well, let me let me take it from another slant. Our, our millage rate has, has dropped by two mils, essentially. We're, we're down two mils and it's becoming harder to maintain the programs that we have with two fewer mills than what we were uh, levying just just in 2017, you know, two and a half, three years ago. Um, so uh, a headly rollback, you know, might be something that even if this doesn't get, if we don't put something on the ballot, might might be something that council will 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 will, will talk about. So in, um, even if like if we the residents voted on proposal three and we picked that one, it's still probably likely that maybe next year or the year after that the healthy rollback would be going out to the voters as well, in addition to whatever was signed for proposal three. The only difference is that money wouldn't be earmarked towards the roads. Right. You're 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 exactly right. Although, you know, if if I think I'm I'm like you, I think the, the economy is gonna go quite in the tank for, for a while, uh, although I'm hoping it doesn't. Um, but if that's the case, then our property values will, will probably go down, in which case Headley won't roll us back any further for, you know, whatever the length of that recession is. Um, so it may not be necessary, in, you know, for until years, years out into the future, but you're, you're exactly correct. Um, yeah, and regarding the, the special assessment, um, yeah, uh, you know, the, the, the gravel roads were, were done in, in, in that regard um, in, in years past. Um, but yeah, I, I can, I can, we can put together some special, special assessments. I mean, part of the, part of the, the other problem associated with that, with doing it via special assessment versus a millage is, um, with a special assessment, if you do it on, on a, on a street that's got 10 houses, you know, if six people say, no, we don't want our street paved and it's a major thoroughfare, then it's not getting paved via special assessment. So, um, you know, it, it, it well, it doesn't address like Santa Barbara and some other streets that don't have, I mean, there's residents on it, but you know, it's harder to do those type of streets too. Right. Cause there's fewer residents. With the Santa well, there's a lot of residents, but they're not, that's not their main, you know, they're not addressed to Santa Barbara, but you Correct. only have like two houses on Santa Barbara that are in a block. <laughs> sure. Right. That makes sense. Or, or Bloom, Bloomfield is another example. There are, yeah, there, Bloomfield there are, too. Yeah. It's a mile long and there's just a handful of houses with Bloomfield addresses. Got it. Thank yeah. you. That answers my question. I appreciate that. Yep. Thanks, Zach. Okay, those are all of the raised hands that I see. Um, you do have some questions in the Q&A box. Can you see those, Bruce? Uh, I'm sure I can. I just got to find them. Where does it say? Oh, Q&A. Okay, Q&A. Q and A. I'm tapping, but nothing's happening. Uh, oh, I got to cancel this screen. Okay, so let's see. The first one: uh, What legal language protections will we later taxpayers have in the charter from future city council real reallocations of any of these potentially approved millages that are earmarked specifically for road and ditch repairs? So, um, so for 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 plan for plan one. Um, which was the one taking it from multiple multiple sources. There are no there are no um, you know uh, ironclad protections. Um, that you know the 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 solution to that was to do a, a, a council resolution if, if we go with that program 
dedicating those mills to make it extremely difficult for future councils to, to, to take that money. With the other um, uh, proposals, um, it's, it's in the wording of the ballot language. The ballot language um, would be worded in such a way that that money was, was earmarked for roads um, and, and road-related purposes so that that money can't be used to, you know, build a new police station or, you know, create a dog park or a, any, other, any other application. And, that, and that's pretty common in most proposals that, um, that, that the wording is typically in such a way to, to make that money um, go to the particular in, intended use. Um, let's see, the next question. Makes, I'm not sure I understand this question. It makes sense to not do dirt road ditches because, oh, uh, because they love dirt roads and how the ditches are. I'm not sure I understand that question. So the dirt road. I think it's a the dirt road more ditch, than a question. <laughs> yeah, the, the dirt road, unless I'm, if I'm misinterpreting, I'm not, maybe I'm misinterpreting that, but the, the, the dirt road ditches are, are no different than the ditches for all the other roads in terms of, you know, needing to be repaired. So I'm not sure what that was. Does that, any of the other panelists have any thoughts on that? I think that was just a comment. Okay. Um, will the city have a comprehensive plan to provide training to residents that are paying for new ditches on how to keep culvert free and clear. That's definitely something that we can do. Um, we, we have, uh, there is a document, uh, I've seen it on, on the city website. Um, Cheryl, correct me if I'm wrong. I know I've seen it in the past that, that talks about um, homeowner responsibility with respect to ditches. I think it was actually published in one of the R towns. Um, but we have, talked, we have talked about doing a video, um, but we just haven't, haven't done that yet. And I think, you know, if we if we do have a plan to put together, uh, you know, to, to, that, that we enact and we start doing the ditches, I definitely think they're, they're, they're a two-step approach. One is educating residents, as, as I think this question is implying, on how to do the ditches. And in fact, Michael Griffin and I were having a conversation last night um, about, um, you know, him doing his ditches and not knowing which way the water is supposed to flow. So again, that's a, that's a basic question that we would have to answer for people uh, in order for them to be able to do their ditches. So, so there would definitely be an, an, an um, education component, um, but then there's also a code enforcement imp component. You know, we are getting a part-time code enforcer, so that's something that's new. We will have additional code enforcement resources. Um, as far as I know, I don't think anybody has been, you know, uh, contacted from our code enforcer about, about you know, ditch, ditch flowing problems and the improvements that they would need to make. But, um, you know, once we start repairing the ditches, then, you know, our code enforcer can be much more aggressive about, uh, you know, A, noticing these things and B, requiring people to fix them so that we don't get in the situation that we're in right now. And I think I'll, I'll, to a large degree, the situation that we're in right now is because nobody ever paid any attention to the ditches. And as they got worse and worse and worse, nobody was correcting them, nobody was pointing it out to people. Um, residents didn't know that they needed to, to fix their ditches, and if they did know, they didn't know how. Um, so I think between code enforcement and education, we could handle that. Um, I'm late to the party. What insect problems were being referred to that were, would be corrected by ditch improvements? Well, the, the, the fact that we have standing water that sits for, um, in some areas, weeks, multiple weeks at a time, it, it, it allows insects to breed, and it also provides a fresh water source for uh, rodents, which is part of the reason why we have such a, 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 a explosion in the rodent problem over the last 10 or so years. Um, with the expected economic recession over the coming years, would prices to do road work go down because of less demand and strained state budgets? Um, that's definitely a possibility. Um, you know, the road, you know, one of the comments I made at the beginning was that these costs are approximate and not a exact. Um, the reason why I put that, um, Disclaimer up there, although I do think we're somewhat in the ballpark, pretty close. I put that disclaimer up there is because when we came up with these 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 cost estimates, um, they were uh, I think based on last November, and we know that construction costs have have gone up because the economy was booming uh, until just recently, and there was a lot of competition for those materials 
Um, and so that was driving up the cost of materials. But the, it's very possible that the exact opposite would occur, um, you know, now because, of, you know, if we do go into a recession, and that, that actually might make things cheaper and we might be able to do, um, you, you know, a little bit more. Um, when can we receive a copy of the plans you discussed with this evening? Um, I will get those to Cheryl um, probably tomorrow, um, and she can, she can post them on the website for, for, for people. Um, I, I didn't send them out ahead of time because I, I, I figured, you know, I was probably best to go over them. I think there was a lot of uh, opportunity for uh, confusion and mis misinterpreting some of the, the numbers in there because I, it, it, they were really meant for, for discussion purposes, but we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get them out there. So um, any other Questions, comments, concerns. I, I know. I know there was a poll out there. Cheryl put a poll out there. I, I was hoping to get some. I was hoping to hear hear comments from people like, "Oh, Plan Three stinks. Let's go with Plan One." Or, "Hey, Plan Two looks good, but I don't like it because of this reason." Um, Cheryl, are we getting feedback through the poll? Yes, uh, we are getting participation in the poll. Okay. Good. Good. And. Uh, again, you know, we're, we are planning on having another town hall on Sunday, and uh, maybe if we get back to the point where we can meet in person, you know, have another uh, in-person town hall. But we're trying to get, you know, some some direction um, to guide the, the infrastructure teams so as we kind of deliberate towards which of these plans might make the most sense. Should the economy be in a decent shape in in uh, in August when we have to make that decision? Oh, wait, let's see. Um, Okay. Yeah, Mark. Maybe maybe you can make the Sunday um, the Sunday uh, uh, town hall at 3 p.m. And if if not, I can always talk you through some of these some of these plans. Um, can I make myself available for side discussions? Always. Uh, my email is is bcantor at uh, lathervillage.org. Um, and then the other committee members, I'm sure, can you can contact them as well. I don't want to blast their emails out out there without their permission, but you know you can always forward them to me if you want to get their their or ask me and I can give you their um, information privately. Um, let me see details. Yeah, so that I answered that. Um, anything else? Panelists, advisors, any legal, any uh, any comments? All right. no, I think I think Bruce, we probably should try to put a couple examples just based on some of the questions on if we just did everything by a special assessment. Yep. You know, kind of, kind of like what we did for the ditch thing is like, well, if you live in this place that, you know, an, an estimate would be that this is what it would cost to repair your roads and, and uh, ditches, right? Just so it kind of gives them a, you know, at least a, if you're looking at here's the millage route versus here's the special assessment route. Matt, yeah, I it, thought you explained it pretty good on, you know, it'd probably be significantly higher cost, but, you know, just so people have yeah, it out there. It's pretty straightforward to figure. I just got to verify my uh, per mile estimates for, for the various um, reconstruction, repaving, resurfacing, rehabilitating, you know, that stuff. And, and it's pretty easy to, I, when I, when I created the ones for the ditches, I basically got on Google maps and I could look at an aerial view and I could count the number of homes on that segment. And I knew that gave me the denominator for the calculation. So I, I could, I could do that. Like I said, I'll, I'll work on that in the next, next several days. And, you know, uh, we can either get that out on the website or, or include it. Maybe, maybe I can even, maybe I can even try to include some of that in the, uh, the Sunday presentation. Uh, I'm not sure if I can get to it by then, but if I can, I will. Any other comments? Mike, Hugo, Joe? Okay. All right. Well, again, I want to thank everybody for, for uh, attending. Um, you know, everybody stay safe, keep social distancing, and uh, hopefully we'll get out of this soon. And uh, um, everybody have a good night.